The Lord be with you. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercy never come to an end. Jesus said, "Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted." Friends, sisters, and brothers in Christ, we are united here today by a common sorrow, a, co a common affection, and a common hope. We have come together to give thanks for the life of Roger Neil White. To remember the way his life touched ours, and to entrust him into the keeping of God. We have also come to share the sorrow of those who mourn, with Nancy, Duncan, Allison, Sean, Lauren, and the extended family, and to offer them our love and support. And we're here to bear witness to. The hope in Jesus Christ, who said, "I am the resurrection and life." Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. With faith in Christ, let us lift up our heart to God, that the Lord may bless us with strength and peace. Let us pray. O、oh, gracious God, our heavenly Father, in your mercy you sent Jesus Christ to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. He lived our life and he died our death. He rose again to give us new life and hope. He proclaimed to us that He is the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in Christ, though they may die, shall yet live. Such a mystery of death and life is too wonderful for us to fully comprehend. So, to you, God, we give our thanks and praise. Draw near to us as we draw near to you, and speak to us of your steadfast love, from which not even death can separate. We confess the burden of knowing a love like yours, and our failure to serve you and to serve one another, to receive and give love, to pardon and to accept pardon. Forgive us. For the things we have done that we regret, and for the things we might have done but which we withheld, O、oh、Lord, have mercy on us. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. On the day of resurrection, our Lord declare peace. Peace to those who have been shattered. By his death, and to all who have turned to God, trusting in Christ as Lord and Savior, the same risen Christ says to you in the midst of your sorrow, "Peace be with you." Let us sing hymn hymn three hundred and thirty. O God, our help in ages past. The lyric is printed in the bulletin.
I'm Nancy Rogers' wife, if you haven't figured that one out. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you for coming and for all your kind words and support. It is a comfort to see so many dear faces and remember all the good times Roger and I had with you. <sighs> Looking forward to speaking together at the reception. Roger was born in England and came to Canada when he was four years old. As Roger said, his parents, John and Sheila, were immigrating and he decided to join them, together with his sister Allison. They lived first in Toronto and then settled in Oakville, where his little brother Duncan was born. I did not know Roger then, so I will leave stories of his youth to Allison. Books were our constant companions and Roger's enthusiasm led him to write a mystery, Tight Corner, which was shortlisted for the Arthur Ellis Award uh, for best novel. The book focused on two of his interests, immigration and vintage British sports cars. Roger worked for the Department of Immigration for a number of years, holding various posts, including press secretary to the minister. Jerry may allude to this period later. It is impossible to sum up a person's life in a few words, so I won't try. Suffice to say that Roger held a central place in my life and was cherished by many. His absence creates a void that cannot be filled. I will pull myself together now. Okay. I know it is customary to tell a few amusing anecdotes, but I'm sure that each of you has many memories of your own. Any stories I might tell could get lost in translation. So I will leave it with, leave you with your own remembrances. I am sure that you will have many as the constant thread of condolences I have received about Roger is about Roger's delicious sense of humor. He enjoyed nothing more than lively repartee and a rapid exchange of witticisms. Roger's outing with his golfing buddies, the Amigos, dinner parties and socializing with friends and family, both in Canada and England, and traveling to visit art galleries and historic sites were a significant source of pleasure in his life. He enjoyed music, both playing the piano and in his youth, the drums and listening to his eclectic case in music, ranging from Beethoven to Lead Belly to the British uh, invasion musicians. Sailing and bird watching counted among his many in, uh, pastimes, and his creative side was shown in his beautiful stained glass work. And I would be remiss not to mention his best non-human friend, Watson, our beloved cat of 17 years. For me, forgive me for being a touch modeling, but I like to think of them now playing ball and peekaboo together. Roger was kind and generous. He volunteered at the center, excuse me, at the Center Town Emergency Food Center and was always available to help a friend. Roger enjoyed a glass of wine and a fine meal. Please raise a glass to him when you are next among friends sharing good wine and good food. The rage against the dying of the light is over. Dear Roger, do go gentle into that good night. The scripture lesson today is from John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. And jumping to verse 18 to 19, and then verse 27. It is printed in the bulletin. Um, before I read, I'll just say that this is one of Roger's favorite passage. And uh, from the short time I've known Roger, he was always faithful in serving in uh, the Finance and Maintenance Committee here at St. Giles. And uh, right to the end, uh, how he faithfully uh, served uh, and, and took care of the house of God on earth. Uh, and I think this passage is uh, absolutely suitable uh, that God has indeed uh, prepared for him a mansion in the heavenly dwelling. I'm reading from the King James Version of the scripture. Once again, it's Roger's favorite version of the Bible. 
Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerry Maffrey. I'm a longtime friend and former working colleague of Roger. And first of all, I want to thank Nancy. Allison and Duncan for asking me to share some reflections on uh, my time and our circle's time with Roger. Roger and I first met over the phone when he was working at the Immigration Communications Office in Toronto and I was doing the same job in Ottawa. We finally really met in the late 80s when we were both sent to Hamilton to deal with the media at a fairly high profile deportation hearing that I'm sure some of you will recall. It was a quiet Sunday evening when we checked into the hotel, and suddenly there was an outpouring of screaming down the hall. We turned to see a group of teeny boppers rushing towards us. In fact, they rushed right past us because Hulk Hogan was checking in at the same time, and they were swarming him. Roger later joined the communications team at Immigration in Ottawa, and together in that team, some of whose members are here this afternoon, we faced more than our fair share of the program's trials and tribulations in the media over those years. It was a time when a departmental spokesperson could actually speak to the media, develop a professional relationship with them, try to help them understand immigration, often with the help of some of the immigration colleagues who were here and who could give us some background to these issues. Roger's background in the media certainly helped in dealing with those reporters, some of whom were favorites, others a lot less so. Then in the mid-90s, Roger accepted a theoretically temporary assignment as the press secretary to the immigration minister, Sergio Marchi. He stayed on with Mr. Marchi when the, uh, he was transferred to the Ministry of the Environment. And it was during that time that Roger and the minister were at a, an environmental conference in sunny South America. One day, there was a horrendous snowstorm in Ottawa. Roger got a single short message from the prime minister's press secretary. Get your minister home now! I'm still not sure what the expectation was that Roger and uh, Sergio could do about the snowdrifts in the city. In 1998, Roger retired from environment and the public service. He turned to consultancy work, golfed with friends, played domino with some other friends on late nights at the De Montigny Cottage for many an hour, uh, and as Nancy said, uh, took up stained glass art and volunteered here at St. Giles, the family church for Nancy, and also at the food bank. 
He was also involved in the bazaar here every year and took on some challenging committee work. Roger and I used to chat and talk and commiserate about the challenges of organizational church work. As Nancy said, Roger uh, wrote a novel, Tight Corner, which was published in 2011. A crime novel about skullduggery in guess where, the immigration headquarters, as well as about English sports cars. I think I can still picture some of the scenes that Roger wrote about as actual spots in Ottawa. If you're interested, the book is still available on the internet. Before COVID, Roger, Nancy, my wife Cheryl and I used to ramble through this part of Eastern Ontario. Lunch was always a must stop, as well as visiting any antique shops. Roger and I would often wander off to check out the listings in local uh, real estate agency offices to look for the ideal country home. All idle speculation to be sure. More recently, Roger and I started meeting for lunch or coffee, he was always a cappuccino guy, when our wives played bridge. We'd reminisce about working days, media crises, books, trips past, including to Prince Edward County that Roger and Nancy often visited with Ian and Madeline Taylor. Uh, we'd talk about current events. Roger always had a beau mot to describe the behavior of some public official who was being pilloried in the media. During our working years, Roger was a valid, valued, reliable colleague whose press background gave him extra leverage in dealing with reporters. And critically to his role as a spokesperson, he had a good understanding of immigration, obviously some first-hand experience. It gave him more credibility in responding to the media. His humor, demonstrated annually at the immigration staff Christmas party, his verbal dexterity, his memory for a literary quote, and for the work and life moments we'd gone through made for good conversation. He's surely a friend that I will really miss. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see so many people here because we all remember Roger's finer qualities. Looking back, I can see that my brother Roger's fine qualities were becoming apparent while he was quite young. Roger made friends easily. Some of my earliest memories of Roger were of his games with his friends. They played cowboys and Indians, cops and robbers, and so on. Due to one game, of catch, a neighbor's picture window was broken by an errant baseball. The responsibility for this landed on the shoulders of one of Roger's friends, who looked quite like him and wore a very similar jacket. They were frequently mistaken for each other. We will never know what really happened on that day. It may have been the beginning of Roger's interest in rearranging small pieces of glass. Raj learned early on how to cope with disappointment. He spent many hours building a model airplane, a Grumman F6F Hellcat, out of balsa wood and paper. It was carefully painted and had decals applied. Unfortunately, after its successful maiden flight, our mum wanted to try it out and overwhelmed the propeller to the point where the airplane imploded. The aftermath of this event may have been the first time I ever heard Raj use bad words. Roger showed ambition and a strong work ethic, holding down more than one paper route. In this way, he was able to finance not only a drum kit, but also his first car. This was the famous Austin Healey Sprite, whose replacement hood flew open when the latch let go, breaking the car's windshield. The ensuing charge of driving an unsafe car was met with a plea of not guilty, as it was clearly unintentional. 
One can almost hear Raj saying, but I don't feel guilty, Your Honor. Similarly, Roger's good intentions were demonstrated late one night when the phone rang. It was Raj who needed our dad to fetch him from the police station. He had been apprehended in the act of removing a bicycle from a neighbor's front porch. His defense seems to have been that he couldn't have been stealing it since he'd always put it back on all the previous occasions when he'd used it. There may have been some repercussions. If so, I can't remember what they were. Raj was clever and inventive. When he came down with a respiratory infection, was told he couldn't get out of bed or smoke, I was pressed into service to obtain a pack of cigarettes for him in defiance of this edict. He used his fishing rod to lower a snorkeling mask out of his bedroom window. I placed the cigarettes in it, he reeled it back in. We were caught, of course, and there may have been repercussions, only I forget what they were. Messing about in boats was an activity dear to Roger's heart. On one occasion, the family took a hot holiday at a cottage owned by friends of our parents. With it came a treasured old wooden, lap-straight, double-ended motorboat, possibly from about 1930, with an inboard motor. This was meant for slow, dignified, quiet fishing expeditions. Raj took it out for a burn to the local marina, which had the only pay phone for miles around. The engine gave up at some point during this voyage. There may have been some repercussions, but they are lost in the mists of time. Raj could be adventurous and spontaneous. Duncan reminds me that on a high school field trip, he took advantage of an opportunity to gain control of the bus while it was left unattended and to take it for a short spin. It was a very short spin, and there may have been repercussions. As he grew to be the man that we all knew and still love, Raj was steady and responsible. His talent for making mischief stayed with him, though, and it's one of his many talents that we will be missing the most. Thank you. It was not printed in the order of service. I feel that a prayer uh, is in order. Let us pray. Almighty God, you love us with an everlasting love. You know all about us and you know the thoughts of our hearts before our lips speak them. You're acquainted with all our ways. For that, we give thanks to you. Thank you for this time that we're able to remember Roger. And through this remembering, help us to recall your loving kindness, Lord. For all that Roger was to us and for all that we are to him, we thank you. Though we see him no longer, yet he is with us in spirit and will continue in death to influence our lives. Give us assurance of your care and that nothing can separate him from your love. For it is in the name of Jesus we offer this prayer. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn all through the night and we'll sing it to the tune of Our High Enos.
Before I bless you and dismiss you from this service, I just want to invite you uh, after the service, do come and join us downstairs. Um, Nancy and Allison and the Presbyterian Women of St. Giles has put together uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful reception. So please do join us. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, remain with you always. Amen.